In today's news that sounds really, really cool, but will probably never happen, there is an effort to secede a large portion of Oregon, and I believe Washington, no, 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 I believe it's Oregon and California, into what's called Greater Idaho, because they're tired of the fact that these rural states are being overrepresented, they're, 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 you know, Portland is overrepresented in their state legislation. So they want to secede and form Greater Ohio. It'll never happen, but they're calling it a peaceful revolution. You know what, man? Maybe this is the kind of thing we need. California has talked about seceding and, and, and everyone's like, go for it. Just do it, okay? But now we're seeing how urban centers are disproportionately impacting rural areas of these states. Like Illinois, for instance. I mean, it's most states, actually. In Illinois, it's actually a fairly Republican place, except for Chicago. In Los Angeles, that's eh, mostly blue, but you know, the eastern portions of California are actually kind of red. But then you have Oregon, which is a lot of red. And then you have Portland, which dominates all of their politics. One of the biggest problems I see, and we talked about this on the podcast the other day, is that Democrats enact these policies in their cities. Then they complain about these policies and then want to enact those policies nationwide. Take, for instance, Bloomberg, a man I do not like. A man who implemented stop and frisk. Stop and frisk was a gun control measure where they primarily targeted minorities and he defended it. Then you get Democrats and, and liberals protesting the police in a Democrat controlled city. Well, what do you want? Oh, what's that? You want to make those laws nationwide? You're nuts. So here's one of the proposed solutions. Ballot initiative effort to move Eastern Oregon counties to Idaho gains momentum. Leader calls it a peaceful revolution. Look at that. I don't know if you can't, for those that are listening, you can't see it. It's really awesome. It's called Greater Idaho. It's a massive state. That would just be so dang cool. It's never going to happen though. Oregon Live reports, talk of secession is in the air always. The Cascadia movement has been around for years in the Pacific Northwest, inspired in part by Ernest Colin Beck's 1975 utopian novel, novel Ecotopia, while others in the region call for a conservative rural centric state of Jefferson. Mike McCarter doesn't think anything will come of these efforts. I'm a proponent of the state of Jefferson, the retired Lapine nurseryman said, but I don't see it happening. Well, hold on. It's because you need to appeal to the progressives in the exact same way. Go right to Portland and say, hey, you guys don't like the fascists, right? Just, just do it. Just use their language. Call everybody who's a conservative fascist. And they're like, yes, great. If you vote for this, they will no longer be a part of your state. And, everyone, and everyone's better off for it, right? If both sides don't like each other, then great. We have an agreement, right? Why can't it get done? They say it doesn't mean he's willing to accept the status quo. Secession is a sticky constitutional question, but simply moving a state's borders is doable. That's been done recently, he told the, or uh, the Oregonian, pointing to a 1961 land transfer that moved about 20 acres from Minnesota to North Dakota after a federal project to straighten the Red River cut off the Minnesota parcels from the rest of the state. McCarter is one of the leaders of Move Oregon's Border for a Greater Idaho. The goal, as the group's name suggests, is to flip Oregon's eastern counties into Idaho. And while success remains extremely unlikely, Move Oregon's Border is gaining a little traction. In the past month, Proposals to let voters weigh in on the issue have earned initial approval from Josephine and Douglas counties, setting the stage for a signature gathering push to get them on the ballot in November. This would be the coolest thing ever, not because I care about the political ramifications, but finally something would happen. Everything's been so boring and static for my entire life. How crazy would it be? I'd go visit Greater Idaho. For really, it's like being in a new state, like, hey, we got a new place. I've been to Oregon but I've never been to greater Idaho. I've been through Idaho, but never greater Idaho. You see, whole new tourism industry opens up. I think technically then, well, you don't even got to change the stars. The flag stays the same. It seems like an easy, easy, easy peasy, huh? Uh, so here, here we go. And while success remains, all right, that we're picking up momentum, McCarter says, it takes a lot of oomph to get something like this started. I call it a peaceful revolution. The group wants to have initiatives on the ballot of every Eastern Oregon County this fall. Our approach is to go county by county rather than a state initiative. We want people in the counties that would move to Idaho to chime in and say, yes, we want this. It takes more work to go county by county, but it informs the public more. I honestly think this is fair. 
It abs- it's absolutely fair. Now, Oregon as a state might say no because it's their territory. And, they're, and, and pe- people in Portland might vote no and say, no way, you're not taking the land away from our state. But I think they should agree, right? They don't like each other. And if you want to talk about proper representation, then it absolutely makes sense for one state to gain counties if the people would be represented better, especially depend, uh, it depends on the industry they work in. Our approach, uh, sorry, I had that already. You can see this, here's the map. They circled all these counties and they would go to these counties and ask them what they wanted to do. Of course, it's not as easy as that. Even if Oregon's eastern counties do vote to, vote to join Idaho, approval would then be needed from the, uh, from the Oregon and Idaho legislatures and then the, uh, and the U.S. Congress. Val- well, but why the U.S. Congress? The states are sovereign. They can make their own decisions. If, if Oregon and Idaho say, great, make it happen, well, why not? I guess because they're members of the union and that's kind of, I don't know, whatever. Valerie Gottschalk a Josephine County resident and another Move Oregon's border leader, said in an email last week that she expected the effort to grow rapidly, having seen the response to the recall Kate petition circulated last year, a reference to a failed attempt to launch a recall election of Oregon, Oregon Governor Kate Brown. People here would prefer Idaho's conservative governance to the progressive liberal current Oregon governance. Got Gottschalk said, Every time I look at the Facebook group Greater Idaho, the group has gotten bigger. Sure enough, the movement's Facebook page consistently showcases conservative political views. Last week, someone posted an article on the page from an obscure satirical news site with the headline, Breaking, Health Officials Quarantine Portland to to Prevent Spread of Communism. But McCarter, for one, doesn't like to position the issue as Republican versus Democrat. It's a lifestyle values judgment between urban and rural more than anything else, he insists. He says many residents of rural Oregon aren't as conservative as as me, but still see the benefits of being part of a more rural minded state like Idaho. He and Gottschalk acknowledge there are a lot of questions Eastern Oregon voters would need to chew on, such as schools funding. Oregon spends more per student than Idaho. And the advantages drawbacks of a sales tax. Idaho has one, Oregon doesn't. And an estate tax. Oregon has one, Idaho doesn't. He admits the uh, the Oregon counties would have to accept they'd likely receive fewer services from the state if they jumped to Idaho. But this also could be one of the reasons Oregon might might be willing to let them go. Most of the counties east of the Cascades are upside down, he says. They have to be supplemented by the state. So potentially, Salem might be willing to do it. Needless to say, those counties' services uh, needs probably wouldn't make a, a border switch more attractive to Boise. And that's one reason the target map to move Oregon's border swings west in the southern part of Oregon. The group is also targeting parts of northern California, which means Californians have to vote on it and they're never going to go for it. Idaho wouldn't be landlocked anymore, McCarter points out. It would have a shipping port in Coos Bay that'd be huge. McCarter recognizes that the movement is a long shot, but he nevertheless believes the dominoes could fall quickly after the county's voters are on record with their wishes. After all, The redrawn border wouldn't create two new U.S. senators as a new state would, nor is it an attempt to leave the U.S., and it would make Oregon bluer and Idaho redder, which would probably please those legislatures' majorities. How often do you have the opportunity to be part of a movement to make things better for people, McCarter says? We're dealing with our liberty. I gotta say, there's some some pros and there's cons, but it does sound like a good thing. Check it out. In this image of greater Idaho, you're going to have many more conservative leaning indiv- individuals being better served by a government that represents them. It's not fair for people in Oregon to be outvoted all the time by Portland, right? However, there is some good to that balance. It's kind of like segregating political, you know, positions in a scary way. Oregon will pro- like the, it, it makes sense, it's going to benefit everybody, but I think it's important to have some conservatives in a blue state like Oregon to push back and vote against some of these more insane things. If the, the conservative areas of Oregon leave, that means Portland will absolutely dominate all of their politics. It means their senators will go even further to the left and never have to cater to a conservative opinion. Now, right now, for the most part, they don't. In blue states, they try and aim blue. But we've seen how in some states that are, say, you know, a blue state, that has a, a Republican senator, or I think there's very few of those, but there are red states with Democratic senators. Those red state Democrats try their hardest to be moderate. If you do something like this, Portland, you know, the Oregon senators will have no reason 
to try and cater to any conservative opinion at all because they won't have any conservative constituents. The same is true for Ohio. So you're actually, it's actually could, could result in a more polarizing effect. Individually, they may be happier in that place. So maybe it does make sense. I kind of want it to happen. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about the political, political ramifications. I don't think it'll be that bad. It just sounds exciting if something like this did happen. And I'd love to go visit greater Ohio's beaches in the Pacific Northwest. Because uh, wouldn't you love to say I'm going to a great Idaho beach? You'd be able to do it after this. Anyway, it's a fun idea. It'll never happen. Fun stuff like this never happens. I guess it used to, but the past several decades have been boring. Life is routine. Nothing exciting is happening. Well, I guess Trump is kind of exciting in some ways, but I'll leave it there. Stick around. I got one more segment coming up in a few minutes and I will see you all shortly.